Southeast Asia Southeast Asia or Southeastern Asia is a sub-region of Asia, consisting of the countries that are geographically south of China, east of India, west of New Guinea and north of Australia. The region lies near the intersection of geological plates, with heavy seismic and volcanic activity. Southeast Asia consists of two geographic regions. Mainland Southeast Asia, also known as Indochina, comprising Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Burma, Thailand, and Vietnam. Maritime Southeast Asia, comprising Brunei, Malaysia, East Timor, Indonesia, Philippines, and Singapore. The major religions are Islam, Buddhism and Taoism, followed by Christianity. However, a wide variety of religions are found throughout the region, including Hinduism and many animist-influenced practices. Divisions Political Definitions of Southeast Asia vary, but most definitions include the area represented by the countries and territories listed below. All of the countries excluding East Timor are members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations ASEAN. The area, together with part of South Asia, was widely known as the East Indies or simply the Indies until the 20th century. Christmas Island and the Cocos, Keeling, Islands are considered part of Southeast Asia though they are governed by Australia. Sovereignty issues exist over some islands in the South China Sea. Papua New Guinea has stated that it might join ASEAN, and is currently an observer. And administrative subdivisions of countries Geographical Southeast Asia is geographically divided into two subregions, namely mainland Southeast Asia, or Indochina, and maritime Southeast Asia, or the similarly defined Malay Archipelago, Indonesian, Nusantara. Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Burma, Thailand, Vietnam, Peninsula Malaysia, East Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, East Timor. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands of India are geographically considered part of Southeast Asia. The rest of New Guinea is sometimes included. So are Palais, Guam, and the Northern Mariana Islands, which were all part of the Spanish East Indies. The eastern half of Indonesia and East Timor, east of the Wallace Line, are considered to be biogeographically part of Oceania. History Prehistory Homo sapiens reached the region by around 45,000 years ago, having moved eastwards from the Indian subcontinent. Homo floresiensis seems to have shared some islands with modern humans until only 12,000 years ago, when they became extinct. One theory, based on strong linguistic evidence, is that Austronesian people, who form the majority of the modern population in Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, East Timor, and the Philippines, migrated to Southeast Asia from Taiwan. They arrived in Indonesia around 2000 BC, and as they spread through the archipelago, they often settled along coastal areas and confined indigenous peoples such as Negritos of the Philippines or Fapuans of New Guinea to inland regions. Studies presented by Hugo, Human Genome Organization, through genetic studies of the Asian races, scientifically points out to another Asian migration from Southeast Asia traveling northward slowly populating southern parts of East Asia and then East Asia itself instead of the other way around. Solheim and others have shown evidence for a Nusantai, Nusantara, maritime trading network ranging from Vietnam to the rest of the archipelago as early as 5000 BC to 1 AD. The peoples of Southeast Asia, especially those of Austronesian descent, have been seafarers for thousands of years, some reaching the island of Madagascar. Their vessels, such as the Vinter, were ocean-worthy. Magellan's voyage records how much more maneuverable their vessels were as compared to the European ships. Passage through the Indian Ocean aided the colonization of Madagascar by the Austronesian people, as well as commerce between West Asia and Southeast Asia. Gold from Sumatra is thought to have reached as far west as Rome, while a slave from the Sula Sea was believed to have been used in Magellan's voyage as a translator. Originally most people were animist. This was later replaced by Hinduism. 
Theravada Buddhism soon followed in 525. In the 15th century, Islamic influences began to enter. This forced the last Hindu court in Indonesia to retreat to Bali. In mainland Southeast Asia, Burma, Cambodia and Thailand retained the Theravada form of Buddhism, brought to them from Sri Lanka. This type of Buddhism was fused with the Hindu-influenced Khmer culture. In the United Kingdoms Very little is known about Southeast Asian religious beliefs and practices before the advent of Indian merchants and religious influences from the 2nd century BCE onwards. Prior to the 13th century CE, Hinduism and Buddhism were the main religions in Southeast Asia. The Jordwirpa Hindu kingdom in Java and Sumatra existed around 200 BCE. The history of the Malay-speaking world began with the advent of Indian influence, which dates back to at least the 3rd century BCE. Indian traders came to the archipelago both for its abundant forest and maritime products and a trade with merchants from China, who also discovered the Malay world at an early date. Both Hinduism and Buddhism were well established in the Malay Peninsula by the beginning of the 1st century CE, and from there spread across the archipelago. Cambodia was first influenced by Hinduism during the beginning of the Funan Kingdom. Hinduism was one of the Khmer Empire's official religions. Cambodia is the home to one of the only two temples dedicated to Brahma in the world. Angkwat is also a famous Hindu temple of Cambodia. The Champa civilization was located in what is today central Vietnam, and was a highly Indianized Hindu kingdom. The Vietnamese committed genocide against the Cham people during the 1471 Vietnamese invasion of Champa, ransacking and burning Champa, slaughtering thousands of Cham people, and forcibly assimilating them into Vietnamese culture. The Majapahit Empire was an Indianized kingdom based in eastern Java from 1293 to around 1500. Its greatest ruler was Hayamaruk, whose reign from 1350 to 1389 marked the empire's peak when it dominated other kingdoms in the southern Malay Peninsula, Bonio, Sumatra, and Bali. Various sources such as the Negare Katagama also mention that its influence spanned over parts of Sulawesi, Maluku, and some areas of western New Guinea and the Philippines, making it the largest empire to ever exist in Southeast Asian history. The Kolas excelled in maritime activity in both military and their mercantile fields. Their raids of Gda and the Srivijaya, and their continued commercial contacts with the Chinese Empire, enabled them to influence the local cultures. Many of the surviving examples of the Hindu cultural influence found today throughout the Southeast Asia are the result of the Kola expeditions. Spread of Islam In the 11th century, a turbulent period occurred in the history of maritime Southeast Asia. The Indian Kola Navy crossed the ocean and attacked the Srivijaya Kingdom of Sangrama Vijayatunavarman in Kadaram, Gda. The capital of the powerful maritime kingdom was sacked and the king was taken captive. Along with Kadaram, Panay in present day Sumatra and Malaya and the Malayan Peninsula were attacked too. Soon after that, the king of Gda from Mawangsa became the first ruler to abandon the traditional Hindu faith and converted to Islam with the Sultanate of Gda established in year 1136. Samudra Pasai converted to Islam in the year 1267, the king of Malacca Param Swara married the princess of Pasai, and the son became the first Sultan of Malacca. Soon, Malacca became the center of Islamic study and maritime trade, and other rulers followed suit. Indonesian religious leader and Islamic scholar Hamka, 1908-1981, wrote in 1961, the development of Islam in Indonesia and Malaya is intimately related to a Chinese Muslim, Admiral Jiang He. There are several theories to the Islamization process in Southeast Asia. Another theory is trade. The expansion of trade among West Asia, India and Southeast Asia helped the spread of the religion as Muslim traders from southern Yemen, Hadramaut, brought Islam to the region with their large volume of trade. Many settled in Indonesia, Singapore, and Malaysia. This is evident in the Arab Indonesian, Arab Singaporean, and Arab Malay populations who were at one time very prominent in each of their countries. The second theory is the role of missionaries or Sufis. The Sufi missionaries played a significant role in spreading the faith by introducing Islamic ideas to the region. 
Finally, the ruling classes embraced Islam and that further aided the permeation of the religion throughout the region. The ruler of the region's most important port, Malacca Sultanate, embraced Islam in the 15th century, heralding a period of accelerated conversion of Islam throughout the region as Islam provided a positive discriminatory force among the ruling and trading classes. Trade and Colonization China Records from Magellan's voyage show that Brunei possessed more cannon than the European ships, so the Chinese must have been trading with them. Malaysian legend has it that a Chinese Ming emperor sent a princess, Hang Li Po, to Malacca, with a retinue of 500, to marry Sultan Mansa Shah after the emperor was impressed by the wisdom of the Sultan. Han Li Po's well, constructed 1459, is now a tourist attraction there, as is Bikit Sina, where her retinue settled. The strategic value of the Strait of Malacca, which was controlled by Sultanate of Malacca in the 15th and early 16th century, did not go unnoticed by Portuguese writer de Barbosa, who in 1500 wrote he who is Lord of Malacca has his hand on the throat of Venice. From 111 BC to 938 AD Vietnam was under Chinese rule. Vietnam was successfully governed by a series of Chinese dynasties including the Han, Eastern Han, Eastern Wu, Cao Wei. Vietnam was not ruled by Cao Wei, it was Wu. Cao Wei was up north, Jin, Liu Song, Southern Qi, Liang, Sui, Tang, and Southern Han. Europe Western influence started to enter in the 16th century, with the arrival of the Portuguese and Spanish in Maluku and the Philippines. Later the Dutch established the Dutch East Indies, the French Indochina, and the British Strait Settlements. Later, all Southeast Asian countries were colonized except for Thailand. European explorers were reaching Southeast Asia from the west and from the east. Regular trade between the ships sailing east from the Indian Ocean and south from mainland Asia provided goods in return for natural products, such as honey and hornbill beaks from the islands of the archipelago. Europeans brought Christianity allowing Christian missionaries to become widespread. Thailand also allowed Western scientists to enter its country to develop its own education system as well as start sending royal members and Thai scholars to get higher education from Europe and Russia. Japan During World War II, Imperial Japan invaded most of the former Western colonies. The Shoah occupation regime committed violent actions against civilians such as the Manila Massacre and the implementation of a system of forced labor, such as the one involving 4 to 10 million Ramusha in Indonesia. A later UN report stated that 4 million people died in Indonesia as a result of famine and forced labor during the Japanese occupation. The Allied powers who defeated Japan in the Southeast Asian theater of World War II then contended with nationalists to whom the occupation authorities had granted independence. Present Most countries in the region enjoy national autonomy. Democratic forms of government and the recognition of human rights are taking root. ASEAN provides a framework for the integration of commerce and regional responses to international concerns. Conflicting claims over the Spratly Islands are made by Brunei, China, Malaysia, Philippines, Taiwan, and Vietnam. Geography Geologically, the Malay Archipelago is one of the most volcanically active regions in the world. Geological uplifts in the region have also produced some impressive mountains, culminating in Puncak Jaya in Papua, Indonesia at 5,030 meters. 16,500 feet, on the island of New Guinea. It is the only place where ice glaciers can be found in Southeast Asia. The second tallest peak is Mount Kinabalu in Sabah, Malaysia on the island of Borneo with a height of 4,095 meters, 13,435 feet. The highest mountain in the Southeast Asia is Kakaba Razi at 5,967 meters and can be found in northern Burma sharing the same range of its parent peak, Mount Everest. The largest archipelago in the world by size is Indonesia, according to the CIA World Factbook. Mayon Volcano, despite being dangerously active, 
holds the record of the world's most perfect cone which is built from past and continuous eruption. Boundaries Southeast Asia is bounded to the southeast by the Australian continent, a boundary which runs through Indonesia. But a cultural touch point lies between Papua New Guinea and the Indonesian region of the Papua and West Papua, which shares the island of New Guinea with Papua New Guinea. Climate The climate in Southeast Asia is mainly tropical hot and humid all year round with plentiful rainfall. Northern Vietnam is the only major region in Southeast Asia that features a subtropical climate, which has a cold winter. Southeast Asia has a wet and dry season caused by seasonal shift in winds or monsoon. The tropical rain belt causes additional rainfall during the monsoon season. The rainforest is the second largest on Earth, with the Amazon being the largest. An exception to this type of climate and vegetation is the mountain areas in the northern region where high altitudes lead to milder temperatures and drier landscape. Other parts fall out of this climate because they are desert-like. Environment All of Southeast Asia falls within the warm, humid tropics, and its climate generally can be characterized as monsoonal. The animals of Southeast Asia are diverse. On the islands of Bonio and Sumatra, the orangutan, man of the forest, the Asian elephant, the Malayan tapir, the Sumatran rhinoceros and the Bonyan clouded leopard can be also found. Six subspecies of the Binturong or Bar cat exist in the region, though the one endemic to the island of Palawan is now classed as vulnerable. Tigers of three different subspecies are found on the island of Sumatra, the Sumatran tiger, in Peninsula Malaysia, the Malayan tiger, and in Indochina, the Indochinese tiger, all of which are endangered species. The Komodo dragon is the largest living species of lizard and inhabits the islands of Komodo, Rinka, Flores, and Gili Motang in Indonesia. The Philippine eagle is the national bird of the Philippines. It is considered by scientists as the largest eagle in the world, and is endemic to the Philippines forests. The wild Asian water buffalo, and on various islands related dwarf species of bibulus such as Anawa were once widespread in Southeast Asia. Nowadays the domestic Asian water buffalo is common across the region, but its remaining relatives are rare and endangered. The mouse deer, a small tusked deer as large as a toy dog or cat, can be found on Sumatra, Bonio and Palawan Islands, Philippines. The gaua, a gigantic wild ox larger than even wild water buffalo, is found mainly in Indochina. Birds such as the peafowl and drongo live in this subregion as far east as Indonesia. The babarasa, a four-tasked pig, can be found in Indonesia as well. The hornbill was prized for its beak and used in trade with China. The horn of the rhinoceros, not part of its skull, was prized in China as well. The Malay archipelago is split by the Wallace Line. This line runs along what is now known to be a tectonic plate boundary, and separates Asian, Western, species from Australasian, Eastern, species. The islands between Java Bonio and Papua form a mixed zone, where both types occur, known as Wallacea. As the pace of development accelerates and populations continue to expand in Southeast Asia, concern has increased regarding the impact of human activity on the region's environment. A significant portion of Southeast Asia, however, has not changed greatly and remains an unaltered home to wildlife. The nations of the region, with only few exceptions, have become aware of the need to maintain forest cover not only to prevent soil erosion but to preserve the diversity of flora and fauna. Indonesia, for example, has created an extensive system of national parks and preserves for this purpose. Even so, such species as the Javan rhinoceros face extinction, with only a handful of the animals remaining in western Java. The shallow waters of the Southeast Asian coral reefs have the highest levels of biodiversity for the world's marine ecosystems, where coral, fish and mollusks abound. According to Conservation International, marine surveys suggest that the marine life diversity in the Raja Ampat area is the highest recorded on Earth. Diversity is considerably greater than any other area sampled in the coral triangle composed of Indonesia, Philippines, and Papua New Guinea.
the coral triangle is the heart of the world's coral reef biodiversity, making Raja Ampat quite possibly the richest coral reef ecosystems in the world. The whale shark, the world's largest species of fish and six species of sea turtles can also be found in the South China Sea and the Pacific Ocean territories of the Philippines. The trees and other plants of the region are tropical. In some countries where the mountains are tall enough, temperate climate vegetation can be found. These rainforest areas are currently being logged over, especially in Borneo. While Southeast Asia is rich in flora and fauna, Southeast Asia is facing severe deforestation which causes habitat loss for various endangered species such as orangutan and the Sumatran tiger. Predictions have been made that more than 40% of the animal and plant species in Southeast Asia could be wiped out in the 21st century. At the same time, haze has been a regular occurrence. The two worst regional hazes were in 1997 and 2006 in which multiple countries were covered with thick haze, mostly caused by slash and burn activities in Indonesia. In reaction, several countries in Southeast Asia signed the ASEAN Agreement on Transboundary Haze Pollution in order to combat haze pollution. The 2013 Southeast Asian haze saw API levels reach a hazardous level in some countries. Myrrh experienced the highest API level of 746 on June 23, 2013 at around 7 a.m. Economy Even prior to the penetration of European interests, Southeast Asia was a critical part of the world trading system. The Ryukyu Kingdom often participated in maritime trade in Southeast Asia. A wide range of commodities originated in the region, but especially important were spices such as pepper, ginger, cloves, and nutmeg. The spice trade initially was developed by Indian and Arab merchants, but it also brought Europeans to the region. First Spaniards, Manila Galleon, and Portuguese, then the Dutch, and finally the British and French became involved in this enterprise in various countries. The penetration of European commercial interests gradually evolved into annexation of territories, as traders lobbied for an extension of control to protect and expand their activities. As a result, the Dutch moved into Indonesia, the British into Malaya, the French into Indochina, and the Spanish and the US into the Philippines. The overseas Chinese community has played a large role in the development of the economies in the region. These business communities are connected through the Bamboo Network a network of overseas Chinese businesses operating in the markets of Southeast Asia that share common family and cultural ties. The origins of Chinese influence can be traced to the 16th century, when Chinese migrants from southern China settled in Indonesia, Thailand, and other Southeast Asian countries. Chinese populations in the region saw a rapid increase following the Communist Revolution in 1949, which forced many refugees to emigrate outside of China. The region's economy greatly depends on agriculture. Rice and rubber have long been prominent exports. Manufacturing and services are becoming more important. An emerging market, Indonesia is the largest economy in this region. Newly industrialized countries include Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and the Philippines, while Singapore and Brunei are affluent developed economies. The rest of Southeast Asia is still heavily dependent on agriculture but Vietnam is notably making steady progress in developing its industrial sectors. The region notably manufactures textiles, electronic high-tech goods such as microprocessors and heavy industrial products such as automobiles. Oil reserves in Southeast Asia are plentiful. Seventeen telecommunications companies contracted to build the Asia-America Gateway submarine cable to connect Southeast Asia to the U.S. This is to avoid disruption of the kind recently caused by the cutting of the undersea cable from Taiwan to the U.S. in the 2006 Hengchun earthquake. Tourism has been a key factor in economic development for many Southeast Asian countries, especially Cambodia. According to UNESCO, tourism, if correctly conceived, can be a tremendous development tool and an effective means of preserving the cultural diversity of our planet. Since the early 1990s, even the non-ASEAN nations such as Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam and Burma, where the income derived from tourism is low, 
are attempting to expand their own tourism industries. In 1995, Singapore was the regional leader in tourism receipts relative to GDP at over 8%. By 1998, those receipts had dropped to less than 6% of GDP while Thailand and Lao PDR increased receipts to over 7%. Since 2000, Cambodia has surpassed all other ASEAN countries and generated almost 15% of its GDP from tourism in 2006. Indonesia is the only member of G20 major economies and is the largest economy in the region. Indonesia's estimated gross domestic product, nominal, for 2008 was 511.7 billion US dollars with estimated nominal per capita GDP was 2246 US dollars and per capita GDP PPP was 3979 US dollars international dollars Stock markets in Southeast Asia have performed better than other bourses in the Asia Pacific region in 2010 with the Philippines PSE leading the way with 22% growth followed by Thailand set with 21% and Indonesia's JKSE with 19%. Demographics Southeast Asia has an area of approximately 4 million kilometers to 1.6 million square miles. As of 2007, more than 593 million people lived in the region, more than a fifth of them, 125 million, on the Indonesian island of Java, the most densely populated large island in the world. Indonesia is the most populous country with 230 million people and also the fourth most populous country in the world. The distribution of the religions and people is diverse in Southeast Asia and varies by country. Some 30 million overseas Chinese also live in Southeast Asia, most prominently in Christmas Island, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Indonesia and Thailand, and also, as the Ho in Vietnam. Ethnic groups In modern times, the Javanese are the largest ethnic group in Southeast Asia, with more than 86 million people, mostly concentrated in Java, Indonesia. In Burma, the Burmese account for more than two-thirds of the ethnic stock in this country, while ethnic Thais and Vietnamese account for about four-fifths of the respective populations of those countries. Indonesia is clearly dominated by the Javanese and Sundanese ethnic groups, while Malaysia is split between half Malays and one quarter Chinese. Within the Philippines, the Tagalog, Cebuano, Ilocano, and Hiligaynon groups are significant. Religions Islam is the most widely practiced religion in Southeast Asia numbering approximately 240 million adherents which translate to about 40% of the entire population, with majorities in Brunei, Indonesia and Malaysia. Countries in Southeast Asia practice many different religions. Buddhism is predominant in Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Burma, Vietnam and Singapore. Ancestor worship and Confucianism are also widely practiced in Vietnam and Singapore. Christianity is predominant in the Philippines, Eastern Indonesia, East Malaysia and East Timor. The Philippines has the largest Roman Catholic population in Asia. East Timor is also predominantly Roman Catholic due to a history of Portuguese rule. The religious composition for each country is as follows. Some values are taken from the CIA World Factbook. Religions and peoples are diverse in Southeast Asia and not one country is homogeneous. In the world's most populous Muslim nation, Indonesia, Hinduism is dominant on islands such as Bali. Christianity also predominates in Philippines, New Guinea and Timor. Pockets of Hindu population can also be found around Southeast Asia in Singapore, Malaysia etc. Garuda, Sanskrit, Garuda, a phoenix who is the Mount, Bonham, of Vishnu, is a national symbol in both Thailand and Indonesia. In the Philippines, Gold images of Garuda have been found on Palawan. Gold images of other Hindu gods and goddesses have also been found on Mindanao. Balinese Hinduism is somewhat different from Hinduism practiced elsewhere, as animism and local culture is incorporated into it. Christians can also be found throughout Southeast Asia. They are in the majority in East Timor and the Philippines, Asia's largest Christian nation. In addition, 
There are also older tribal religious practices in remote areas of Sarawak in East Malaysia and Papua in Eastern Indonesia. In Burma, Saka, Indra, is revered as a Nat. In Vietnam, Mahayana Buddhism is practiced, which is influenced by native animism but with strong emphasis on ancestor worship. Languages Each of the languages have been influenced by cultural pressures due to trade, immigration, and historical colonization as well. The language composition for each country is as follows. Official languages are in bold. Culture the culture in Southeast Asia is very diverse. On mainland Southeast Asia, the culture is a real mix of Indian, Burma, Cambodia, Laos, and Thailand, and Chinese, Vietnam, while in Indonesia, the Philippines, Malaysia, and Singapore, the culture is a mix of Arab, Chinese, Indian, Western, and the indigenous Austronesian culture. Also, Brunei shows a strong influence from Arabia. Rice paddy agriculture has existed in Southeast Asia for thousands of years, ranging across the subregion. Some dramatic examples of these rice paddies populate the banal rice terraces in the mountains of Luzon in the Philippines. Maintenance of these paddies is very labor intensive. The rice paddies are well suited to the monsoon climate of the region. Stilt houses can be found all over Southeast Asia, from Thailand and Laos to Borneo to Luzon in the Philippines, to Papua New Guinea. The region has diverse metalworking, especially in Indonesia. This include weaponry, such as the distinctive kris, and musical instruments, such as the gamelan. Influences The region's chief cultural influences have been from either China or India or both, with Vietnam considered by far the most Chinese-influenced. Western cultural influence is most pronounced in the Philippines, derived particularly from the period of Spanish and American rule. Due to long periods of Chinese influence on the Vietnamese civilization, Vietnam is considered to be a part of the East Asian cultural sphere. The Vietnamese practice many East Asian philosophies and religions such as Mahayana Buddhism, Confucianism and Taoism which all originated in China. Just like other East Asian civilizations the Vietnamese used chopsticks as their traditional eating utensils. Vietnamese cuisine was influenced a lot by Chinese and French cuisine. As a rule, the peoples who ate with their fingers were more likely influenced by the culture of India, for example, than the culture of China, where the peoples first ate with chopsticks. Tea, as a beverage, can be found across the region. The fish sources distinctive to the region tend to vary. The arts The arts of Southeast Asia have no affinity with the arts of other areas. Dance in much of Southeast Asia also includes movement of the hands as well as the feet, to express the dance's emotion and meaning of the story that the ballerina is going to tell the audience. Most of Southeast Asian introduced dance into their court. In particular, Cambodian royal ballet represented them in the early 7th century before the Khmer Empire, which was highly influenced by Indian Hinduism. Asara dance, famous for strong hand and feet movement, is a great example of Hindu symbolic dance. Puppetry and shadow plays were also a favored form of entertainment in past centuries as the famous one known as Wayang from Indonesia. The arts and literature in some of Southeast Asia is quite influenced by Hinduism brought to them centuries ago. The Thai, coming late into Southeast Asia, brought with them some Chinese artistic traditions, but they soon shed them in favor of the Khmer and Mon traditions, and the only indications of their earlier contact with Chinese arts were in the style of their temples, especially the tapering roof, and in their lacquerware. Indonesia despite conversion to Islam which opposes certain forms of art, has retained many forms of Hindu-influenced practices, culture, art and literature. An example is the Wayang Kulit, shadow puppet, and literature like the Ramayana. This is also true for mainland Southeast Asia, excluding Vietnam. Dance movements, Hindu gods, and arts were also fused into Thai, Khmer, Lao and Burmese cultures. It has been pointed out that Khmer and Indonesian classical arts were concerned with depicting the life of the gods, 
but to the Southeast Asian mind the life of the gods was the life of the peoples themselves, joyous, earthy, yet divine. Music Kim Audio Traditional music in Southeast Asia is as varied as its many ethnic and cultural divisions. Main styles of traditional music can be seen, court music, folk music, music styles of smaller ethnic groups, and music influenced by genres outside the geographic region. Of the court and folk genres, gong chime ensembles and orchestras make up the majority, the exception being lowland areas of Vietnam. Gamelan orchestras from Indonesia, Pifford slash Pinpeat ensembles of Thailand and Cambodia and the Kulintang ensembles of the southern Philippines, Bonio, Sulawesi and Timor are the three main distinct styles of musical genres that have influenced other traditional musical styles in the region. String instruments also are popular in the region. Writing The history of Southeast Asia has led to a wealth of different authors, from both within and without writing about the region. Originally, Indians were the ones who taught the native inhabitants about writing. This is shown through Brahmic forms of writing present in the region such as the Balinese script shown on split palm leaf called Lonta, see image to the left, magnify the image to see the writing on the flat side, and the decoration on the reverse side. The antiquity of this form of writing extends before the invention of paper around the year 100 in China. Note each palm leaf section was only several lines, written longitudinally across the leaf, and bound by twine to the other sections. The outer portion was decorated. The alphabets of Southeast Asia tend to be abugidas, until the arrival of the Europeans, who used words that also ended in consonants, not just vowels. Other forms of official documents, which did not use paper, included Javanese copper plate scrolls. This material would have been more durable than paper in the tropical climate of Southeast.